This is a story of our fathers and sons. It is also a story about partying, thieving, and trickery. It's about responsibility and honor. The story begins. Long live King Henry the Fourth of that name. Long live King Henry the Fourth of that name. <laughs> when the story begins, King Henry the Fourth of England just became king. His oldest son, Prince Henry, is the heir to the throne. But Prince Henry. It's a disappointment to his father because all he wants to do is hang out at the tavern and party. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 With my son! I'm just saying, you know? Yeah. 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 And the king has other problems too. He became king by killing King Richard and seizing the crown. Wow. And now the civil war is raging. With rebels in Wales and Scotland fighting the king forces to oust him from the throne. For the last year, the king has wanted to lead a holy crusade to Jerusalem in order to honor God and find forgiveness for his sin. I'll make a voyage to the Holy Land and wash this guilty blood off my hands. Who's there? Ah, oh. uh, it's Sir Walter Blunt. So shaken as we are, so one with care. We must find a remedy for these medieval. No more shall trenching war channel our fields, and civil butchery be no more opposed against acquaintance, kindred, and allies. The edge of war, like an ill-sheathed knife, no more shall cut his master. Therefore, friend, as far as the sepulcher of Christ, forthwith a power shall we go, power of English shall we go, to chase these pagans in those holy fields, over whose acres, fourteen hundred years ago, walked those blessed feet, which for our advantage, were nailed to the bitter cross. But this, our purpose now, is to fulfill. My liege, but yesterday there came a post from Wales, loaded with heavy news, whose worst was that of noble Mortimer, leading the men of Herefordshire to fight against the irregular and wild Glendower. <laughs> was by the rude hands of the Welshmen taken, a thousand of his people butchered, on whose dead corpses there was much misuse. Oh. It seems the tidings of this broil bank off our business to the Holy Land. Uh, <laughs> yes, there is yet more unwelcome news <laughs> come from the north. The gallant pop spur there, and the warlike Douglas, that valiant Scot, did fight a sad and bloody hour. Uncertain is the issue either way. Oh. Here's my younger son, Prince John. My lord! I bring you smooth and welcome news. The Earl of Douglas was discomfited by Hasper. Oh. Hasper, Hasper's God. 10,000 bald Scott. Two and twenty knights. Hasper vanquished them and took prison. Is this not an honorable spoil, a gallant prize? Well, it is a conquest for a, a prince to boast of. Oh, yea, there you make me sad, oh. and sin with envy, that my lord Northumberland should be a father to so blessed a son. A son who is the theme of honor's tongue, while riot and dishonor stain the brown of my Harry. Oh, that it could be proved that some night-tripping spirit had exchanged in cradle clothes our children where they lay. He is the, the most honorable and accomplished youth, my lord. A while we must neglect our holy purpose to Jerusalem. On Wednesday next, our council we will hold, for more is to be said and to be done. Yep, your will, my liege. Okay. <laughs> liege, <laughs> Nearby, Prince Henry and his best friend Falstaff are drinking at the Borge Head Tavern. Far off and pen or party with them. Shit. Sure. It's sad, man. Sure on that. Hey, fat boy. What's up, man? I'm a fried. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. What you are so fat with, 
with drink, old sack. And unbuttoned afternoon. <laughs> Chris, you're sleeping on benches. <laughs> you know nothing. Uh, what the devil have you do with the time of day? We that take purses to go by the moon and the seven stars, and I pray, sweet friend, that we are king, that you are king, and let us know that as squires at night to be called thieves by the day, and let men say that we are men of good government and governed by the sea, and our noble will chastise Mistress the moon under whose comfort we steal. You say, well, fat man, and it holds true. For the fortune of us that are the moon's men, who does ebb and flow like the sea, for proof now, a purse of gold most resolutely snatched for the Monday night. And most dissolutely spent on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> it's now as low as Ed, as the foot of a ladder, and by and by will make us as high as the richest the gallows. You are the most rascally sweet young prince. You have done much harm upon me. How you have got to give you for it? Before I knew you, how I knew nothing. And now I am better once of, of the wicked. I must, I must give over this life, and I will give it over by the Lord. If I do not, I'm a villain. Where shall we take a purse tomorrow, Jack? What's that? Uh, <laughs> I ask you, where shall we take a purse tomorrow, Jack? Oh, sounds. <laughs> sounds. Where you will, I'll be there. Mornings. Stand to a true man. Ha! Good morrow, Dad! Good morrow, sweet love. Jack, <laughs> how was the devil all about your life? Would you sold us by for a cup of Madeira? <laughs> <laughs> Say, Sir Jan stands to his word. He will give the devil his due. <laughs> then you are done for keeping your word with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> or else he would be dead for cheating the devil. <laughs> But my lad, tomorrow morning, by four o'clock, mm. early at uh, Gas Hill, there will be pilgrims going to Canterbury Ooh, with five persons. Five persons? Man, look, we may do it as if you're asleep. Nice. Mm -hmm. mm. If you will go, I will start your purses full of crown. crown. If you will not, tear me home and be hanged. Oh. If I turn at home and go not out, hang you for going. How will you be one? Who? I? Rob? A thief? Not I. Huh. There is neither honesty in manhood or good fellowship in you if you dare not. Well then, once in my day, I'll become a madcap. Well, that's well said. <laughs> I'll tarry at home. Sir John. Sir John, I pray to leave Prince and me alone. I will lay down such a reason for this adventure that he shall go. Will God give you the spirit of persuasion and him the ears of profiting and that true prince may prove a false thief? Therefore, you shall find me at East Cheek. Ha! Ah, farewell. <laughs> now, my good to the honey lord. Lord, mm -hmm. ride with us tomorrow. 
I can't, I have a gesture of security that I cannot manage alone. Mm. Mm. Posta, Fardo, Empero, Shadow, those men. You and I will not be there. And when they have the booty. And when, and when they have the booty, if you and I do not rob them, cut this head off from this shoulder. Yeah. The beauty of the chest will be in compensable lives. This same fat rogue will tell us tomorrow when we meet a supper. Well, I'll go with you. Farewell. Farewell, my lord. Mm. I will, a while, uphold this unyouth humor. Yet soon, now, will I imitate the sun. Who does permit this base contagious clouds to smother up his beauty from the world? That when he please again be himself, being wanted, he may be more wandered at. So when this loose behavior I throw off, by how much better than my word I am? By so much shall I falsify men's hopes, and like bright metal on sullen ground, my reformation glittering over my fall shall show more goodly, they attract more eyes than that that has no foil to set on it. I will so make a fence a skill, redeeming the time when men least think that I will. Scene three, a dark road at night near Gads Hill. <laughs> Think 
Some of my masters let us share it and then to go to horse before today. The prince and poems are two airy cowards, <laughs> and there's no valor in the poems than in a wild duck. <laughs> Yo, Maggie, like my black grind. I drank this other one also. I'm a rogue if I'm not drunk today. Oh, villain, your lips are quite scarce since you drank last. All's one for that. <laughs> okay, I'm playing on all cowards, still say I. What's the matter? What's the matter? There's three of us here that have taken a, a thousand pounds this morning. Where is it, Jack? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Taken from us it is. A hundred upon the poor three of us. <laughs> what? A hundred? Man. And, and if I were not as sore with a dozen of them three hours all together on a herring, I'd escape through a miracle. I was thrust through eight times, and my sword was hacked like a handsaw. I've never bought, I've never fought better since I was a man. <laughs> a plague on all cowards! A plague on all cowards! Yeah. Speak, sirs. How was it? 
three set upon us about six or seven. Sixteen at least, my lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was more like six or seven, but maybe more. Uh, you Whatever, dude. You fought with them all? All? I know not what you call all, yet if I didn't fight at least 50 of them, I'm nothing but a sack of radish. <laughs> I pray you have not murdered some. Nay, that's past praying for. I've definitely peppered two of them. Those two I'm sure I paid. Two rogues in buckram suits. I tell you what, how? If I tell you a lie, spit in my face. <laughs> right here, right here. <laughs> call me a jackass. So, so these four rogues in buckram drive after me. My yeah, four, how I told you with him, I didn't want to. What four? Yeah, what I, I, four? he said four. What four? <laughs> you said for just two now. Four, how I told you four. I, he said four. I four? In background suits? Four, how I told you four. These four came up and thrust at me. I made no further ado, do, but I took all their seven points thusly. Seven? Why are you but four? Even now, in Buckram? I four. Let him alone. We shall have more soon. It was at least seven, or I'm a villain. And then he said that, and I said, Do you hear me, Hal? These nines that I told you of in Buckram nice. started to give ground, yet I followed close, and seven of the eleven I paid. Oh, monstrous. Eleven? Bagram men grown at it too? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. These lies are like the father that tells them, round is a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. All right, all right. Well, Same, I gotta tell you something. You starveling, you lamb pizzle, you stockfish. Oh, for the breath to utter what is like you. You yardstick, you twig, you vile little duck. Well, get, get breathe out a of while. breath when I get excited. Check so. it out, check it out. Check it. <laughs> Calm down, <laughs> fat boy. <laughs> breathe a while and then to it again. And when you have tired yourself, man, hear me speak. Mark, Jock. Okay, check it out, man. <laughs> Good liar. But here's the truth we too saw you three set upon and rob them. Yeah. Then did we, too, set upon you, and with a word, outfaced you from your prize. It was a, it was a, it was a mean word, though. It wasn't very nice. Outfaced you <laughs> from your prize. And we have it. Yeah, I can show it to you. And Falstaff, you carried your guts away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> As nimbly. And you roared, for mercy, and you ran, and you roared, ah! What fantasy, I, I don't understand it. Even as a bull cat, right? I mean, this is what you do. What trick, what reason, what fantasy can you now find to spare yourself this open and apparent shame? It ain't no fantasy, man, I'm gonna tell you the truth. By the Lord, I knew it was you, as well as he that made you. And, and, and do, you, do you hear me? Can you hear me, my masters? Was it for me to slay the heir apparent? I mean, should I should I turn upon the true prince? Mm. You know I am as valiant, at least as valiant as Hercules, but beware of instinct, for the lion, for even a lion will not turn on the true prince. Oh my god. Let's see. Instinct is a great matter. I was cowardly on instinct. Though, by the Lord, lads, I'm glad you have the money. Buy us a drink. Absolutely not. Lord, Prince. Yes. There is a nobleman at the door. He's from the court. He says he comes from your father. Well, send him back again to my mother. <laughs> Shall I give him your answer? You do, Jack. I'll send a pack if I can make it to the door. Jesus. <laughs> 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 now, sirs, Pedal, Bardo, you are lions too. 
you ran upon instinct. Will you not touch the true prince? I tell you, I only ran when I saw the others run. Cowards you are. <laughs> no. I, I blush to hear his monstrous stories. <laughs> Here so comes where you jog. So here comes bear bones. <laughs> okay, let's see. There's villainous news abroad, sire. There was Sir Good Sir, Sir Walter Blunt from your father. You must do court in the morning. That insane mad self mad fellow of the north, Glendower, and his son-in-law Mortimer, and old Northumberland. And that sprightly, sprightly, that sprightly Scott of Scots, Douglas, that runs on horseback up a hill perpendicularly. He that rides at high speed with his pistol kills the sparrow flying. You have hit it. Ah, so did he never the sparrow? He is there too, and a thousand Scots more. They have joined with Hotspur in rebellion against your father. Are you not horribly afraid? Is your blood not thrill at it? <laughs> Not a whit, Jack. Because you see, I lack some of your instinct. <laughs> well, you will get chided horribly tomorrow when you go to see your father. Practice an answer. Do you stand for my father and examine me on the particulars of my life? This chair is my throne, that shank is my scepter, and this and this belly is my crown. Well, <laughs> here's my lady. And here is my speech. Stand aside, nobility. Oh, wow. oh this is excellent. Harry, <laughs> <laughs> I not only marvel where you spend your time, yet also how thou art accompanying it. For though the chamomile upon which the more trodden, the faster it shall groweth, youth upon which the more wasted, the faster it shall weareth. That that thou art mine son, I doth have partly thine own mother's words, and slightly, very slightly, mine own opinion. Yet all the more significantly doth this a villainous trick of thine eye, like that, and a foolish dangling of the nether lip. <laughs> if, if thou is son to me, herein resteth the point. Why, as son to me, art thou so often pointed at? All uh, shall the glorious son of heaven prove a truant and doth eateth raspberries? A question not to get asked. Yet, shall the son of England prove a thief and hit a lick? A question to get asked. Here is a, there is a thing, Harry, of which thou, thou, uh, of which thou doth knoweth well, and doth is known to many in this land under the name of pitch. As pit, this pitch as ancient writers doth report it, doth defile, as doth the company thou keepeth. For Harry, now I do not speak it to thou in pleasure, yet in passion, not only in words, yet also in woes. And yet there is a virtuous man, whom I noteth of often in your company, yet I doth not knoweth his name. Hmm. What matter of man, your majesty? A well-rounded, portly man of a corpulent and cheerful look, pleasing to the eye with, with a most noble carriage. Oh, 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 and now I doth remember. His name is Falstaff. 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 Doth that man is lewdly given, he doth deceiveth me. For Harry, I doth seeth virtue in his looks. Keep with him, yet departeth all the rest. And tell me now, you naughty varlet, where hast thou hidden this month? Do you speak like a king? You stand for me, and I'll play my father. Depose me? Well, <laughs> here I am. Set. Make sure you got the scepter, or else you're in the All right? There you go. There you go, little Prince Henry. <laughs> OK. And here I stand, dude. The complaints I hear of you are grievous. Dude, my lord, they are false. You like how you like how I'm imitating you, Henry? By changing my voice like that? Oh wow. Okay. Check this out. You are violently carried away. 
from, from this grace. There is a devil that haunts you in the likeness of an old fat man. A ton of a man is your companion. Why do you converse with that swollen parcels of dropsies? Yes, yeah, that fat lip you got back there. <laughs> what huge bombard of sack. What stuffed bag of guts. <laughs> that roasted ox with pudding in his belly. Man, shake it. <laughs> Wherein is he good but to taste sack and drink it? Wherein cunning but in craft? Wherein crafty but in villainy? Wherein villainous, but in all things. Wherein worthy, but in nothing. Who means your highness? That villainous, abominable, miserable leader of the youth. That old white bearded Satan. False. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, dude, I totally know that guy. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> Yet, to say I see more harm in him, Ben and me is a fat lie, dude. No way, man. Uh, get get rid of uh, pedo, bart off and points. What? Not sweet Jack Falstaff. Not kind Jack Falstaff. True Jack Falstaff. Valiant Jack Falstaff. And dude, even way more valiant because he's old Jack Falstaff. Fat and liar Jack do Falstaff. Do not do not take him <laughs> away from your Harry's company. Take away plump Jack. Take away the whole world, dude. I do. And I will. <laughs> I can you believe it? Can you believe it? Man, pay my bill, Harry. You took the money. Absolutely not. <laughs> Scene five. The next day, Prince Henry goes to his father, King Henry IV, at the royal palace. <laughs> I know not whether God by you does punish my mistreadings. Tell me else. Could such low, inordinate desires, such barren pleasures, rude society as you are matched with and graft to, accompany thy greatness of the blood, or hold thy level with the, with the princely heart? Oh, please, your majesty. You would find pardon in my submission. God pardon you. Yet let me wonder, Harry. Your place in council you have so rudely lost, which by your younger brother is supplied. The hope and expectation of your time is ruined, and the soul of every man prophetically does forthink your fall. All eyes are weary of your common sight, save mine, which have desire to see you more. I shall hereafter, my trice time, glorious Lord, be more myself. For all the world, as you are to this hour, was King Richard then, and even as I was then, is Hotspur now. Now does this Hotspur, this rebelling Mars, shake the peace and safety of our throne? And what say you to this? Hotspur, Northumberland, the Archbishop of York, Douglas Mortimer, capitulated against us and are up in arms. Mm -hmm. But wherefore do I tell these news to you? Why, Harry, do I tell you of my foes, which are my nearest and dearest enemy? Do not think so. You should not find it so. And God forgive them that so much have swayed your majesty's good thoughts away from me. I will redeem all this on Hosper's head, and in the closing of some glorious day, be bold to tell you that I am your son. And that shall be the day, whenever it lights, that this same child of honor and renown, this gallant Hosper, this all-praised knight, and your unthought Harry, chance to me, forever honored, sitting on his helm. Would they were multitudes, and on my head my shames redouble. For the time will come that I shall make this northern youth exchange, this glorious deeds for my indignities. And I will call him so strict account that he shall render every glory up. This in the name of God, I pray, here, and I will die a hundred thousand deaths before I break the smallest parcel of this vow. A hundred thousand rebels die in this. You shall have charge and sovereign trust herein. 
Lord Mortimer of Scotland has sent word that Douglas of the English rebels men are coming to Edinburgh. Lord Mortimer of Scotland has sent word that Douglas of the English rebels met the eleventh of this month at Shrewsbury. A mighty and fearful band they are. Ooh. Our hands are full of business. Let's let's away. Advantage fees and fat while men delay. That rhymes. <laughs> army meet the rebels on the battlefield at Shrewsbury. How now, my lord of Worcester? It is not well that you and I should meet upon such terms. You have deceived our trust. It is not well that we meet on these terms. It is not well. What say you to it? My liege, I do protest the day of this dislike. You have not sought it. How comes it then? Rebellion lay in his way, and he totally found it. Peace, sure, peace. My lord, I must remind you, we were the first and dearest of friends until you killed the king and took occasion to forget your oath to us and seize the crown. Therefore, we stand opposed by such fiends as you yourself have forged against yourself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In both our armies, there are many a soul shall pay full dearly if once we join in battle. Tell your nephew Hosper, I do join with all the world in praise of him. I do not think a braver gentleman, more daring or more bold, is now alive. For my part, I may speak to your shame, or to my shame, I should say. I have been a truant to chivalry, and so I hear he doth account me too. Yet before my father's majesty, I will save the blood on either side. Try fortune with him in a single fight. We love our people well, even those we love that are misled upon your cousin's part. Will they take the offer of our grace? Both he and they and you, every man, shall be my friend again, and I will be his. So tell your cousin and bring me word what he will do, but if they will not yield, rebuke and dread correction, wait for them. So be gone. So be gone. Mm. It will not be accepted. They are too confident against this world. Henceforth, every leader to his charge, for on their answer we will sit on them, and God befriend us as our cause, cause is just. I said, how? How, dude, dude, did you see me down during the fight? Come help me, man. <laughs> Say your prayers and farewell. <laughs> I, would, I would if it were time for sleep, pal. And all well. Why? You go got a death. Dude, it isn't due yet, and I loathe to pay him before his day. <coughs> honor spurs me on, though. Yea, yet what if honor spurs me off when I come on? What then? Can honor set a leg? Nay, nay. Or an arm? Nay. Or take away the grief of a wound? Nay. Honor has not skill in surgery then, right? Nay, what is honor then? Only a word. What is in that word honor, dude? What is that honor? Air, man, a trim reckoning. Who has it? He that died on Wednesday, does he feel it? Nay. Does he, does he see it? Does he hear it? Nay. Honor is a mere distraction, and thus ends my catechism. <laughs> Whoa, how? Give me leave to breathe a while. 
Alexander the Great never did such great deeds in arms as I did today, man. Like, uh, this day, I whacked Hotspur. I totally slayed him like Darth Vader, Holmes. He's alive <laughs> and living to kill you. I say, live me your sword. If Hotspur is alive, then you, get, then you can't have my peace, man. You can have this, though, sir. Have something that's good. It's a little bit warm, but it's still good. What? <laughs> it's a time to jest in Delhi, too? Who's this? Oh, shit. Oh, Who's this? Sir Walter Blunt. Seems like he is avoiding any danger now, though. Right? Uh, maybe I can share in his safety and rest a while. That would be cool. Okay. Okay. Ugh. Ah, uh, uh, shot! Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I mistake not, you are Harry the Prince. <laughs> you speak as if I would deny my name. My name is Harry Hosper. <laughs> well, think not, Harry to share with me in glory anymore. Two stars keep not their motion in one sphere, nor can one England brook a double reign of Harry Hosford and Harry the Prince. The hour is come to end the one of us. Huh? Well, bring it. <laughs> You have robbed me of my youth. I'd rather have the loss of brittle life than to lose the honor you have won of me. But thought the slave of life, a lifetime's fool. No, I am just fool for. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> for worms, brave Hotspur. Farewell, you great heart. Ill-sought ambition, how much you are shrunk, when that this body did contain a spirit, a kingdom, for it was too small a bound. But now two spaces of the vilest earth is room enough. Farewell, and take your prize with you to heaven. Oh, old acquaintance, huh. could not this flesh keep in a little life? Poor Jack, farewell. Yeah, he did. <laughs> could have better sh spared a better man. In bow I see you and by and by, till in blood by noble Hosper lie. What? Embowled? Ah, if you do embowel me today, then I give you leave to salt me and eat me tomorrow. My word. <laughs> oh man, it was time for counterfeit though. Uh, lest that Hawk Scott had paid me Scott and Locke too. Counterfeit? I think that's a lie. I'm not counterfeit. Dude, the, the greater part of valor is discretion, in which the greatest part is that I have saved my own life. Zounds! I do, uh, I do fear this cannonade that is Hotspur, though. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Even though, even, uh, what if, what if he should rise, even though he's down now, and get me? Maybe I'll just make sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not tell people that I'm the one who did that. White dog. That's what we needed. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah, that's. Uh, I I guess I got him. <laughs> I did. It. Hey, you guys can come back now because I you come brother John. I got him. Hey, brother. I thought you told me that this fat man was dead. I did. I saw him dead, breathless and bleeding on the ground. 
Are you alive? We will not trust our eyes. You are not what you see. Yeah, yeah. See, I want my eyes. <laughs> you are not what you see. Uh, nay, nay, that's certain. I am not a fallen man. Yet, if I am not Jack Falstaff, then I'm a Jack. Yes, you are, ass. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is Hotspur. There lies Hotspur. If your father uh, gives me the honor that, I, that I'm due, that's cool. If not, though, allow him to slay the next Hotspur. I shall require the title of either Earl or Duke, at least, man. Why, Hotspur, I killed myself, and I saw you dead. Did you? My word, how this world is given to falsehood. I grant you that I had gone down out of breath, as was he, and, and then, uh, but then after a while we rose up and we fought. A long hour on the clock, we were sword fighting. You, if you understand that, cool. Yet if not, let those who ought to reward my valor wear the sin upon their own heads. I tell you, brother, this is the strangest tale I ever heard. This is the strangest fellow, Brother John. Come on, see that again. How goes the field? The noble Scot, Lord Douglas, when he saw the valiant Hotspur slain with all his men, fled with the fray. You have redeemed my lost opinion. Rebellion in this land will lose his sway since honorable deeds were done today. And since this business so fair is done, let us rejoice that our victory is won. Victory, victory is won! Won! Yes. 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 One, two, three. Yeah.